Okay, so let's jump back in and talk more about what enantiomers are. So in the previous video, we, we showed an example of what enantiomers are. We showed uh, these two, let's go ahead and just scroll up. We showed these two uh, molecules, they're mirror images of each other and they're non-superimposable. So it's a chiral molecule. The relationship between these two uh, molecules is that they are enantiomers. So more of a definition of enantiomers is that it's a version of stereoisomers. So now notice, so like cis-trans isomers that, or stereoisomers had the double bond and that was the different orientation around the double bond. So this is all single bonds, right? In this particular case, we can have some examples for double bonds, um, but the, this is talking about how we can have different orientations of molecules that are all just single bonds. Um, so these are stereoisomers where the mirror image, or they are mirror images of each other that are non-superimposable, superimposable. So the main thing to look for when you're talking about enantiomers and trying to see what, like the relationship between, uh, or if it's chiral, actually. Um, so a chiral molecule is going to have an enantiomer. You can draw the enantiomer of a chiral molecule. So now we're really looking into how do we define or how do we find if a molecule is chiral or not? And that is when, uh, they're bonded, so the carbon is bonded to four different atoms or groups. So this is really important, four different atoms or groups. Um, so for example, I could have this molecule here. So if I look at this carbon atom in the middle that I just pointed, made red. So if I look at that, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my hydrogen so that I see what my fourth group is. But if you look at the four groups on this carbon atom, we have a hydrogen, an oxygen or an alcohol, a methyl group and an ethyl group. Those are four different things. Therefore, this molecule or this particular carbon atom, let's pick a different color. This particular carbon atom right here, the red one is chiral. Sometimes we like to signify that as a star. So I put a little star there to show that it, it is chiral. It has four different things on it. Um, however, if we go into, let's say a molecule where um, it's not quite as obvious, let's look. I'm going to put a draw our hydrogen in to show. If I look at this carbon here, it looks like it could have four different things on it. However, you notice that there's a hydrogen, a uh, group with an alcohol on it, but then we have two methyl groups. These two groups here are the same. Therefore, it is achiral at that position. So if two of the substituents on carbon are the same, I'm gonna prove it to you by using these pictures here. So this carbon atom here, we have a hydrogen going up, chlorine, and then with two bromines, two of the same uh, atoms connected to that carbon. If I take the mirror image, you see that we, now we have the bromines going in towards the mirror, chlorine going away. All I have to do is to rotate around this bond here. So I'm gonna keep my carbon hydrogen in the same orientation and just rotate these bottom three around in a circle. I then can overlap these two molecules. So this molecule is just the rotation of this molecule and it's the exact same as what we started with. So if you have two of the same groups on a carbon atom, then it is achiral. In order to have a chiral carbon atom, you need to have four different groups on your carbon atom. So let's practice. Identify if each of the following is chiral or achiral. So I'm going to look 
for a carbon atom that has four different groups on it. So here, this carbon, let's do, oh no. I think we're good. Okay. So if we're, let's look at this first carbon here. So this carbon has three hydrogens on it. So it's definitely gonna be achiral. This carbon here is, has two hydrogens on it. So it's definitely achiral. This one on the very end has three again. So I'm interested in this, this uh, carbon in the middle right here. It has an ethyl group, a methyl group, a chlorine, and a hydrogen. So this carbon here is chiral, making this overall molecule a chiral molecule. Okay, now looking at the second atom, um, we have two hydrogens on this carbon here that we're, I'm going to go ahead and put a red dot on. So this is an achiral, just because we have two of the same atom or group on the carbon. There's no particular carbon on this molecule where there's four different groups on that carbon. Okay, let's look at this one here. I'm gonna look at this carbon and we have a bromine, a chlorine, hydrogen, and a methyl group. So this is a chiral molecule as well. Okay, so now we're looking at enantiomers and stereoisomers. The fact that enantiomers are stereoisomers. The reasoning is because they are the same formula. They have the same connectivity. but they have a different arrangement around the carbon. Um, so overall, enantiomers will also have the same physical properties. Oh, that's not, doesn't say same, there we go. So for example, boiling point, melting point, things like that, et cetera. They all, they have the exact same properties uh, of one another because they have the same, same orientation or, or yes, same orientation around things, but um, different arrangement. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Oh no. And we're back. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to talk about or a property though, so if they have the same physical properties, then how do, how do you know? How do you tell them apart? Well, they have different interactions with plane polarized light. What this means is if I take, you know how uh, polarized sunglasses, how those work is they take all of the, the light that's coming in at all the different angles, and it only allows the one angle of light to go through, so it filters out the light. So if I have one wavelength of light kind of going like this at me, or at the atom, one hand of the atom or the molecule is going to make the plane polarized light, the single plane of light, turn one direction, and you can uh, detect that but the other enantiomer of the atom is going to make the, the uh, light turn to the other way. So one will make it turn left, one will make it turn right. And that's how you determine the difference between the two enantiomers. Um, so how this is uh, denoted is by a um, either, it's called a D or an L in particularly, um, in biomolecules, we have D and L. So an L enantiomer uh, turns light to the right, and then a D enantiomer, I'm sorry, L is to the left, D is to the right. So an L enantiomer turns plane polarized light to the left, D enantiomer turns it to the right. Um, so that is the actual like physical properties. That's how back in the day before we had more modern analytical techniques, 
um, in order to determine at what we call absolute stereochemistry, which has a little bit of a different um, uh, like letters associated with them. Um, so this was just describing, does it go to the left or does it go to the right? Um, and then the reason it's instead of uh, R, like L and R, is because this was actually de determined back a long time ago, actually. Um, I guess they didn't look up, but it back in, when they were using Latin for everything. So um, right in Latin is dextro. And so that's why it's uh, labeled as D is because it's the Latin word for right. So L is levo, which means left, and D is dextro, which means right. So then the last thing that we're gonna ask is, well, what if a molecule has more than one chiral center? So if we look at these molecules here, for example, this atom and this carbon and this carbon both have, uh, they both have chiral centers there. And so the um, question is, how do we determine if the, um, or how do we classify them if they're not exactly the same? So these two atoms here, or these two, let's draw a line in between them. These two on the first row, if we take the mirror image and put them on top of each other, um, then these are actually enantiomers. As you can see, keeping the chain exactly the same, um, all these are, these two are flipped, for example, and these two are flipped. So everything is flipped the same. Everything is completely flipped around. Um, those are enantiomers. However, in this one down here, you'll see that we'll do two different colors. In our two molecules, you have the first one with the oxygen on it. When you, that one doesn't seem to be flipped with the red carbon that I just labeled. However, the blue carbon is flipped. So one of those is different, but one of them is the same. So they're not superimposable uh, mirror images anymore, but the carbon related, so if I kind of chop this molecule in half, then it would be a enantiomer. But when you have multiple chiral centers, you can have enantiomers if everything flips, or you can have diastereomers. So there's a change at only, or a change at not all chiral centers. So in this particular case, we had two chiral centers. So one changed and one didn't. And so um, we have a diastereomer instead of an antiomer. And diastereomers are specifically different in that they have different physical properties. So uh, overall, when you have multiple chiral centers in an atom or in a molecule, um, you need to whether, determine whether or not the whole thing switches, which is an enantiomer, or if only part of it switches is a diastereomer.